And whatever comes out of it is the essence of you. So it's necessary to be going through pain. Mm -hmm. This is why pain is elemental. The fire is right. elemental to turning that what you don't want into what you do want. So if you ignore the furnace, you'll never be able to get to the gold. Um, I joined today by Troy Flateau. <laughs> this is my brother, and I just learned how to say his last name today. <laughs> <laughs> I should, okay. well, stepbrother, but brother. Um, oh, it's all the same over here. It's all family, man. <laughs> it is. Um, and I'm super happy because I have got to spend so much more time with you than we ever did growing up. And I'm so excited mm -hmm. to just kind of like get to know you slowly through I mean, watching you on social media is a fun way for me to get to know you, but also just the conversations that we have is really fun too. Yeah, I agree to that. Like I was telling Wendy about it the other day that like, you know, we, we didn't see each other. I remember I saw you mm -hmm. once and I think you were 12 and I was like eight or seven or eight or something yep. like that. You came over to the house and like that we had our picture taken. I remember I dyed my hair and like yeah. I had this like spike. I can remember the I still have that picture. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the uh it was such a big thing. It was like, oh, you know, this is your sister. And I was like, Oh, I've never had a sister before. <laughs> and then it's, but you know, growing up happens and life happens. And yeah. there's been a couple other times. But yeah, lately what's been bringing us together is just like running our own businesses and like mm -hmm. the the you know, really like the realm of entrepreneurship and what that means is like reprogramming yourself like what we were talking about like mm -hmm. we're really bonding now through this like hey how was your childhood because mine was really hard and like <laughs> we're trying to make our lives cool and like do the things that we say we want to do and I, I think that's a really exciting way yeah to get to know each other it's like this it like is. I think what we're we're getting to see is like like how I want to be seen like not like this people yeah. pleasing like little boy it's like I'm this super creative mm -hmm. man that has plans to want to change my world yeah. yeah and i i wonder if it's because i kind of i didn't know you fully like i didn't know all the ins and outs of everything mm -hmm. i just knew you on like a surface level of like i knew you were a creative i knew that you um were like a good leader and all these things about when you were a kid but i didn't like ingrain like i didn't have all the nitty-gritty of like living with you and knowing like your dirty you know <laughs> laundry type yeah secrets, the, right? yeah the <laughs> <laughs> the, drum, the drama queen stuff that you you luckily got to miss out on. I uh, was very dramatic. Oh, Still so, am, but I'm just so was I just it more. <laughs> Let's just yeah. be honest. Like yeah. it's it's probably yeah. a, it's a family trait. Even though we're not blood, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we're, no, we're, totally. We're similar. Well, you know, I think that that <laughs> goes right again. Like why I think I like being an entrepreneur or mm -hmm. like, I don't even really like using the, the word because I, I still I don't quite feel like, I'm just like a creative person that wants to have a business. Right. Right. But like, right. I, th I think, I think that the, the drama thing for me is like, it's a gift, you know, being dramatic because like, I'm not afraid to be like in front of a screen. And like, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, this is actually something I've been like a side project I've actually wanted to work on. It's like, how can I create like something for people who own their business, but they don't have the gift of the drama where yeah. they don't want to be seen, you know, because I'm sure there are like a lot of people out there mm -hmm. that um, actually, no, I know there are because, so I'm in this. Um, so, you know, for your viewers, uh, I practice massage therapy. Mm -hmm. And one of the things um, I have blended uh, every once in a while, I really like comedy too. And I like making people laugh. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've used my, my knowledge of massage and my, you know, like wanting to make people laugh um, together. And so I'll make like these funny TikTok videos about, you know, being a massage therapist or something. And then I'll like reshare them and put them in this massage group that I'm a part of on Facebook. And that always gets a really big laugh because we have all the massage therapists in one point at one place. And they, uh, a couple of people have commented like, oh, like, I wish I had the confidence like you to like, you know, put myself out there. And I was like, oh, there's something right there. Like people see something in me that they don't feel in themselves. Like that's mm -hmm. how I can help. It's like, yep, you know, you know, it, like, don't be afraid to kind of be seen. And like, like, mm -hmm. trust me, when I first started like making content and putting stuff out there, I was taking like 40 takes to get yeah. like a 60 second clip. Like that was a legit thing. I would literally like, 
you know, yeah, da, da, da. and then I'd like stumble over my words or I'd have too big of a pause and I'd be like, yeah, like, <laughs> like stop that. And like started recording sure. another one. And then finally, once I felt it was perfect enough, you know? So it's like, like, I'm just another like average person who like, even though I have the gift of drama, like I still have to like practice, you know, deploying that. Um, yeah. I, it's yeah. true though, I, but I think it helps. Um, and this goes, we were talking uh, prior to this about like the person I was raised and the person I was born and the person I was born as was a drama queen and was very like outgoing and flamboyant and like not afraid at all, had no fear. And then the person I became was very reserved. These kind of talks and these kind of like moments are like, like a part of like why it's so important for me to like make meaning in my life and to like, you know, have the ambition to want to change the world because it's like, we have so much power yeah. to do something, but uh, we don't even know like how to use it. And it's no. like one of my missions is to learn how to use it and how to help and how to like, yeah. you know, you won't ever have all the answers, you know, it's not, that's not what I'm no. saying, but it's just like, like, that right there is a superpower like mm -hmm. you see like premonitions and stuff and, like my mom like she ha well, she'll have dreams and like you know there's been really odd times where like she'll wake up you know maybe in the middle of the night or mm -hmm. like she'll text me like at re weird hours and she's mm -hmm. like are you okay and i like would happen to be going through something super hard she's like i just had mm -hmm. this dream about you and you know stressful or whatever or she'll have a dream where someone's pregnant mm -hmm. and i think she was teaching at the time um and one of her students that she was like close with happened to be pregnant and she was like no like I knew that was happening or like st like those kind of yeah. things like some people might write those off as like coincidences or right. ironic and it's like that to me points out like a much deeper thing that's happening here rather than just like making money mm -hmm. having children having the car running a business like 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 it, there's a really deep spiritual tone mm -hmm. to life and like my life and um I like want to uncover that and not make it so mm -hmm. mystical and actually yeah. have it grounded in like a reality thing. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have to yeah. be like, Oh, she's weird. She's got those things happening. It's like, no, what is that? Let's talk right. about that. Let's get that out. Yeah. I, I love when people say like science is magic that we forgot, or is it the opposite? Mm -hmm. Magic is science mm -hmm. that we I forgot can... or something like that. Um, <clears throat> Because I think that a lot of those are intertwined of like this just psychology to me is so, so fascinating and like just understanding like how the human brain works. We don't like we can't describe dreams. Yeah. We can't understand like any of the deja vu things or like there's so much interesting stuff that goes into that. Um, and that, you, like, that yeah, go ahead. No, I'm going to cut you. To that point, to that point. So this, this man that I'm studying under uh, right now, um, like holistic health mm -hmm. to you know, improve my skills, uh, his name is Paul Check, and he has his system he calls the, the Check Totem Pole. Um, and if I'm remembering this correctly, and I'm, I'm very certain I am, the bottom of his totem pole, which, which, uh, which is like the foundation of what all of our systems um, are founded upon, uh, is the mind. So like the mind is the most important part of our health because like, because then the next one to that, I think is uh, respiratory. So like breathing. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a question of like, how can the mind be over breathing? And it's like, well, you can hang yourself. Like your mind mm -hmm. literally can stop That's yourself true. from breathing. So like your mind is a, a, a more powerful control center than just your breath alone. So mm -hmm. think about that. I mean, like we don't even think about breathing. So like yeah. if we couldn't, how long can we go without breath? You know, a few minutes, you know, right. the world records, but like most people, like only a few minutes. Right. So it's like our mind is more powerful than our breath. Like, what is that? You know, what is our mind? And it's like, it has so much power and it's like, what is creating, you know, these yeah. limitations that we were talking about for an hour before getting on here. Like right. all these feelings that we're going through is like, they're all, we're just like, we're just like on uh, reprogramming. We're like mm -hmm. wiping the software on our computer. And it's like, we're doing the hard work. We're actually, wow. I just saw this too. It's like, it's like the reason why it feels so hard is like, and you know, a little bit about coding. It's like mm -hmm. coding. It's like, you know, how hard it's like you run a script and then you hit enter. You think you've gotten this paragraph of script mm -hmm. and it's like error. And you got to go find the one spot that you actually put too <laughs> right. many periods in. And you just got to erase that. Like, right. that's what this process feels like. It's right. like, you know, when you get to this stage of 
It's like you've just been writing the code for years, right? You've been writing. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I got it. And you're like, I'm over all this stuff. Like, the fuck? Like, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, damn, where's the mistake? You got to redo it all. And it's mm-hmm. like, that is the place where I think you're talking about, Ashley, when you yeah. said you go from the stress brain into the executive, but right mm-hmm. between that is this like, oh, fuck stage of like, mm-hmm. you're just recoding everything. And it takes, yeah. and what I have to remind myself, and I think, putting myself in a position like on this this podcast to even say it out loud is like it just takes time healing Mm -hmm. like becoming this thing takes time and there's a reason in my mind that's what I use it's like peeling an onion right you gotta like there's so Mm -hmm. many layers and that's similar to code right because there are many layers to code and you have to like really like dig in just like me uncovering that this was something and it Again, it's not to put blame on the way that I was raised. It has nothing to do with that. It's just the way that I perceived the 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 way I needed to act in that moment created a long-term effect for my life. And it wasn't that anybody told me I needed to be quiet. I am just a very caring, serving person. And so naturally, in order to take care of my grandmother and make sure that she was comfortable and safe, I, I changed the way I reacted and that rewired Mm -hmm. my brain Mm -hmm. and it put a Mm -hmm. bug in my code that was against Mm -hmm. the original coding, what was intended. Right. And so, yeah, now I have to go because this is where I think we see, like, we feel the pull to be someone else, to do better, to, to like, Ooh, this isn't right. I don't like the way I'm acting right now. Um, but I don't know how to fix it necessarily because you have, like, you have to do the work to like, find out what was the core, like, again, holistic approach. What's the root cause of this Mm -hmm. issue and then fix it, which takes time because now you have to, you have to go find what should have been there in the first place and and do the work required to retrain your brain to react a better way and it, it feels uncomfortable because now you're going against one what you originally had been doing all these years but two you you still feel like oh yeah this is slightly better i like it's getting me closer to where i want to be though so you're like it's this tension of like you're pulling yes. apart like yourself really and it's uncomfortable as fuck (laughs) it's that statement like you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't like yes if you if you make this new decision your old self feels like you're making something wrong yeah but if you don't make the new decision the person you want to be feels like i'm not who i am you know so it's like and it's (laughs) like it's it's something that wendy's mom actually had said that's pretty profound um she's like you know life is hard like choose your heart and I think there's a, there's even a, you know, uh, there's another big quote out there talking about like choosing your suffering. Like, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, pain is, is a part of life. And I think you have to choose what you're going to be in pain over. Um, and it's like, do you want to be the pain of growth or do you want to be in the pain of like, just like true suffering, which is like helplessness and victimhood Mm -hmm. and like, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. And I can understand why it's not people don't want to do it why people will live lives of just like silent desperation because it's so hard to you know like I was telling you before we got on like yesterday I just I'm I'm working so hard to find out what fulfills me and it's mm-hmm. like some days I just can't find it and it's like mm-hmm. oh maybe I'll just give up on this whole vision that I have like maybe right. I'm not who I say I am but it's like then I'm just going to sit and sulk and be suffering because I'm not right. doing anything so it's like yeah, even like pretty much the point is, and this is also why I've like kind of wanted to start that that pain campaign project is that like pain is elemental, like pain mm-hmm. is elemental. It's like earth, air, fire, and water. It's what makes up life. Pain is a part of life, and mm-hmm. I think the moment if we can just make that switch, even and I don't need this to be true. Like right. this is a thing like about magic and about. Um, personal truth it doesn't need to be true for everyone but if it works for you and if and if and if yes. you feel that like pain is elemental and that's what's going to help you accept it and cope with it and learn from it and grow from it then like use that 
And like the moment that I kind of, my friend actually had inspired the realm of thought. And he was like, pain is elemental. It's part of life. And I was like, elemental. That's true. It's like the component. Think about mm-hmm. a seed, right? How does it, how does it turn into a flower? Pressure. It pops, it cracks. Mm-hmm. That's what growing is, you know? And it's like, if we can get to a place where we understand our own unique stress language, if we can get to a place where we understand the language that pain talks to us personally yeah. as because it won't be for everyone. No. Like there is a there is a there's a gibberish that's happening inside of you when this when these sufferings and pains happen. And it's up to you to really decode it and mm-hmm. practice trial and error. Why is this happening? Not like why from a victimhood, but like what is this trying to teach me? Yeah. And I think that place, that's where the pain gets transmuted into a positive mm-hmm. pain, not yep. a, a suffering one. And so like visually when you're talking about that, this, the difference I see is someone who, again, we talk about this like, oh, I'm treading water and I feel like I'm drowning all the time. <clears throat> to me, even having that state of being is still better than being like that zombie that's just like floating at the bottom of the ocean because you've given up, right? Because that's the, that is like, if you give up, to me, that's what that is, right? Of just, it's like a death of yes i completely gave up on my dreams whatever that might be i gave up on myself and that's where you sit in that pit of despair of like self-loathing and like just victim like this is like no one's coming to help me poor me cynicism yeah (laughs) and that negative and that and that like to me that's worse right than yeah just once in a while having my head go underwater. Like if I still come back up for yeah. air at least, yeah. like like I yes. I'm I'd much rather that. Um and I think that again that's retraining the pain in a positive way. And I think that we all have like this, we need to find what our our tolerance level is, right? Because like we were talking about yeah. with kids, my tolerance level is different than what yours might be because yeah. I have two children on my back while I'm drowning. And so like I have a lot (laughs) less ability to, to sink below. I've got to like stay up. Like I've got to keep them up at least, even if I'm drowning. Right. So, um, so the, the tolerance levels of where you can, where you can still struggle, but move forward is different for everyone. And yes, so I think we all just have to learn what those like where those are and like just be yeah. aware of them. And I, I'd say a pra- like like because I, I for me, I really like practical stuff whenever I can. Like, yeah, I love like talking heady. And then there's moments if someone can give me something practical to like match that mm-hmm. headiness, then like that's gold. And so, so I do have something for that. And that's what I was telling you, like, like yeah. a few days ago with the ice, you know, for me, um, for me, so, so there's ice. I use ice or just like physical challenges. Like I tried to walk the Appalachian Trail this year, which is a 2,200 mile trail. I was I was intending to do the whole thing. That sounds insane mm-hmm. to most people, but what it taught yes. me was my limits that you're talking about. I got right. 710 miles. That's still a huge accomplishment, but I got to sense what does too much feel like to me, and what does what is a pain that I don't want to keep going into there's pain that is manageable that like you know if anyone's ever worked out like sometimes there's that pump that you feel you get that 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 hot feeling in your body and it feels kind of good that's a pain that you kind of enjoy but then there are you know other pain like walking the trail it just got so much to where I was like I'm actually good like I actually found the limit and at once that looks like a failure but then like if you look at it on the other side it's like you got to meet your boundary and like exactly. that knowing your boundary knowing what you can take it allows you to stay in that instead of trying mm-hmm. to take on things that you can't same thing with ice right mm-hmm. like when i first started doing cold therapy i was just doing like you know 30 second showers it's like after the uh, after the hot hot shower i just turn on the cold and like it would be like <gasps> it'd be really painful but like now i can get into an ice bath and i don't even have the panic attack i'm just like <sighs> That's you so just amazing. go there because I know that experience. I know the right. limit. I know what I'm going to feel. And so, mm. so the practical application, I how I've found 
of how to find like wh what can I take mentally is by practicing physical challenges that push my limits physically. And mm, those two things are that. like, you know, working out or ice and you know, cold therapy because, yeah. That's been my hardest thing with approaching where I'm at and being in the oh fuck zone is I am, I'm better at being able to meet physical uh, hardships than I am mental yeah. hardships because yeah. I it, like I can visualize it better and I know my limits. Yeah. Whereas like my mental limits, I haven't figured out like how far is too far. And oftentimes I've pushed myself over the edge into burnout too many times. Um, yeah. And so my body tells me that I need to stop doing that because I haven't recognized where to stop yet versus like physically, yeah. I know like, okay, I've done too much. My back hurts. I like, I'm gonna need to, to chill out for a while now. It's time to rest. Yeah. And so my body can push myself to that, that wall and then say, okay, I'm good. Whereas like mentally, I haven't found like, like, I don't feel that wall as much anymore because yeah. it's like the ability for the brain to keep going is so like powerful, but mm -hmm. my capability of coping with the fallout is not powerful at this mm -hmm. point. Like I haven't exercised that part to, to, to meet that. And so I think like, I, that like having that knowing that that moment and and like setting boundaries this is why like having like blocks of time and like having routines works really well for a lot of people I think because it gives you mental barriers to mm -hmm. operate in that feels better than like just doing random stuff all the time that has no yeah. like you can't see the end in it's in invisible. sight Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's it like I think that's really important that we yeah. acknowledge those things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like just finding ways to push it. I think I just saw something recently that like it's very similar, like it's triggering me right now where it's like um, you. There's like a certain pressure that I'm not going to word it right. I'll, I'll interpret it from my own, but it's like. Yeah. There's a certain like success with with putting like that pressure or routine. Like sometimes um like setting a time frame for something actually allows us to put in effort. Like when you like mm -hmm. I have these tasks to do, but I have all day to do it and there's no tenacity with it. Yeah. It's like you might find yourself at eight o'clock in bed and you only got one thing that you wanted to get done today. But if you're like, okay, I gotta do this between eight and eleven, mm -hmm. your mind can say, I just gotta push through for three hours and then I'm like done yeah. you know where instead of saying I just got to do this today which I'm not saying I even practice that but I'm, I'm yeah. using relating it to what you're saying that like yeah. if we can put a time frame on something mm -hmm. it actually focuses that mental energy mm -hmm. on something and I do think that the, I think everyone can can agree to what you mm -hmm. just said about physical you know stress is so much easier to manage it's so easy to see I mean yeah. it's right in front of us where when right. we don't know we don't know what mental stress is. We can't see that. We right. can't see emotions. Like it's not so easy to deal with those mm -hmm. things. And I think that's why when I, if I were to think of a totem pole of the four bodies, which is like physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, physicality would be at the bottom because it's the most, it's the most manageable thing. And then I guess, then I guess I would say, I'm um, just like putting it together. I think mm -hmm. the physicality would be at the bottom and then emotions would be above that because you can feel emotions. It's right. not as physical, like where I can see my hand broken or something or, <laughs> or whatever, but like there, there is a sensation that comes. And then mm -hmm. there's like, then I would say there's a mental, then mental would be over emotional mm -hmm. and then spiritual, which to me, like, I think some people hear the word spiritual and they're like, Oh, hippie or whatever. But it's like spiritual to me, it's just like a, like a bigger uh, plan than yeah. than just you. Like it's it's meaning to me. Spirituality is like taking responsibility for like the meaning of your life, mm -hmm. and the meaning you give it is your spiritual health. Like 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 whatever. Yeah. Like if you're atheist, if you're if you're um, Hebrew or like Jewish or Christian or you know Buddha, Buddhism, Hinduism doesn't matter. All those things are just 
meaning. You're yeah. giving meaning to an energy that is not bound to a name or a exactly. thing. So it's like whatever you want to use. Yeah. I think we all have this spiritual health. And I think, I think what we're seeing now in the age of like entrepreneurship is like, it, it's a re like a resurrection of spirituality mm -hmm. in a way, because my mentor actually, um, my mentor I, um, had told me this a couple of years ago when I was saying all these goals I had for myself and we were going through this like very spiritual process. And I was telling him a lot about business and he said, well, the more that your spirituality evolves, the more that your business will evolve. And I didn't understand it at first, mm. but then once I actually started going through the process of entrepreneurship, it is an alchemical process. Like there's a, a science way back in the day called alchemy, where it's like the, the metaphorical turning lead into gold. And when you hear that, you're like, how, how that's not like you just you just burn lead and then it becomes gold but if you look at that spiritually if you look at that with a deeper meaning it's what we're doing right now yeah dude. it's like we're taking this lead which is like the <clears throat> the heavy dense um um like like people pleasing and all the things we don't mm -hmm. want to be and we're in this process now where we've put that child we've put that 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 nervous old nervous system pattern into the furnace to burn it and it's uncomfortable it's painful because mm -hmm. that's what purification is that's what alchemy is is you right. take lead you take this dense raw form you burn it and whatever comes out of it is the essence of you so it's necessary to be going through pain mm -hmm. this is why pain is elemental the fire is right. elemental to turning that what you don't want into what you do want so if you ignore the furnace you'll never be able to get to the gold and so I think spirituality, like yeah. getting connected to that meaning in your life, mm -hmm. like, why am I going through this pain? It doesn't have to be true for everyone. It doesn't have to make sense. You don't even have to tell anyone if you don't want to. Right. But having something that you can connect to internally, that's, I think, what separates, you know, successful people from that's true. The, the herd, I guess you could say. Well, and I think, too, that that calling that whatever that might be like the meaning um is really what allows you to continue to be in that state of pain or uncomfortableness yeah. or in the oh fuck zone or in that <clears throat> transition between the life you had lived before and and that one that you really want and um the the hard part for me is like the reason that I want to do this podcast, the reason that I want to continue to grow my own business to help people isn't just for the sake of like smaller amounts of people, but it's making this life, like this process accessible to more people because if we can help more people understand like this, this, pain like that that is manageable it is something that will get you closer to where you want to be it's not a negative thing it's not something that you need to run away from it's actually yeah you're in the fire and you're you're gonna become the phoenix right <laughs> like you're yes or yes. like it's the dragon egg that's about to hatch into this amazing glorious thing um like it's the stimulus that's going to create your your ability to have that meaning and and like get you to that spiritual level like climbing the totem pole right of mm -hmm. like there's going to be these levels that you have to go through in order to achieve that spiritual like i, yeah. I don't know it's not like a i don't know it's hard to describe like you're not attaining it necessarily but yeah, you can't yeah. have it. Yeah, you can't yeah, yeah. have it. No, and it might always be changing, but it's like something that you're going towards, right? <clears throat> well, see, and that's what I think happened. Like, to, I, I messaged you the other day. It's like, that's what I mm -hmm. think people ask me, I, not people, but like I see videos like, are you happy? Are your memes right. talking about, are you happy? And I have to, when I ask myself, am I happy? It's like, well, how do you want to define happiness? Because right. like, like I can laugh here and there, but does that make me happy? Like not necessarily. And I think right. to me, what happiness is, is, is a sense of fulfillment. And it mm -hmm. has a sense of like something to look forward to. And I think that 
even though I'm going through a lot of pain, it's like confusion. I don't know like what, I don't know what my life is all the time. I don't know how to explain mm -hmm. what I'm going through all the time. I don't know, you know, if I'm successful all the time. Am I happy? I'd have to say, yeah, because like, like, because the pain is enjoyable. It's like a masochistic <laughs> approach. Like even though, but I'm not, but I'm not denying the fact that it hurts. It's right. just like, I just, I just hold on to the faith that it means something else, yeah. that it doesn't mean negativity because I think mm -hmm. growing up, I've been made to feel like, like pain is bad and like yeah. feeling feelings are bad. Like feelings got labeled as good or bad for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just realizing this now pain was labeled good as bad and same for you it's like quiet yep. meant good because grandma won't freak out and, and loud and expressive is bad mm -hmm. so you said when you had enough emotion come in if it felt good that I could express it or if it was bad I couldn't express it and so like but that's not reality no feelings are meant to be felt and yeah. I think that that now that I'm letting myself feel emotions it's like on the bad days it doesn't mean something's wrong. It's just part of the mission. It's part of the yeah. process. And like, I think, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I think all that just needed to come out. Yeah. Emotions aren't bad or good. They're just like, no, for sure. They're, they're, they're an energy. <clears throat> and I think, so even like as a parent, this was the, so that's kind of what broke me was, um, and this is why I started like looking back and starting to like peel back the layers. That was like my stimulus. Right. Um, I had started projecting my upbringing on my own child and he is a very he's such a good kid but he's a kid like he likes to get excited he wants to be expressive he's passionate like me like I was right he he loves to show um and be silly and goofy and be loud and I was like projecting my old response that that is a bad uh, emotion, right? Oh, you can't be loud. Like, calm down, be chill, be, like mm -hmm. relax. Why? That's mm -hmm. who he is. That's like, that's mm -hmm. what makes him so wonderful. I don't want him to be calm. He, like he should be himself. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's where I started really recognizing like, Oh, something's wrong here. Cause my husband's like, why what's wrong? Like, he's fine. What is your problem? Yeah. Like, why are yeah. you so worried? And I was aware enough to acknowledge that my husband who had ADD and was told as a kid to like that he was stupid and that like he needed to be like less, you know, crazy and wild. Like I was able to acknowledge like, no, he needs to be himself. But I couldn't even do that for my own son. I was projecting my own childhood onto him. And that really like broke me. And I think that as parents – this is what, this is where our spiritualness lies, right? Of, mm. I think a lot of us, sometimes it takes that stimulus of seeing who we are as parents and recognizing the, the thing, the work that needs to be done still, mm -hmm. um, so that mm. our children can have better, uh, like, so they're not where we are now by the time that they're yeah. this age. Like, I don't want my son to be struggling the way I am right now. And, and yeah. so for me, it, my spiritually lies, spirituality lies in not only doing that for my son, but for, again, doing it for other parents and helping them see that you don't have to have, like, you don't have to be like so burned out that you're yelling at your children. You don't have to have these moments of like, just, so bogged down by your 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 passion your dream your life like that that need to go forward that your home life is negatively yeah. affected it can be conjunctive it can be together all in one to say like it's my mission to go back and rewrite this code to show my son that it is okay to be himself, but also to show others that it's okay to be themselves and to, to want those things. So I, that's the hardest part for me though, is this pain thing, right? Of like mm -hmm. living in it and telling myself that it's okay. And it's every day. 
It really, it, like, it's every day. It's, it's every day. Every yeah, it's day. Every day. <laughs> of like waking <laughs> up and like assessing where I'm at and then just trying to just get through the day and, and, and come through the other side of, and not give up. Like really that's number one yeah. is just to not yeah. give up by the end of the day yeah. and then do it all again the next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to say I am proud of you for doing that because I mean, like, and what you are saying to me right now is like, I feel like it's an expression of our generation because mm -hmm. there are more people like you doing the same work. And I'm like, that makes me so happy because especially for, for being like the kids on that side where you know how it feels to have like a parent who like doesn't have time for you being you. They want you yeah. to be what they want you to be. Um, and good intentioned people. Let's put oh, it that way sure. too. Like that's, yeah. Like, yeah. like I think a lot of times we can frame our parents. I, I used to frame my parents in such a negative light, but then I had to realize, wait a minute. They were just they doing the best kids. with what they had. They weren't given. Yeah. They yeah. weren't given the time to be themselves. And so I'm just like, oh. Okay, so I can have more compassion. I can stop blaming my problems on them. Yes. But it doesn't, it also doesn't invalidate the feelings I have that, wow, I wasn't oh. being listened to. And so, like, you can just see this, res um, this, uh, um, I keep using the term resurrection, but it's like this resurrection of like, like parenthood and like mm -hmm. actually, um, providing a space for, you know, people to be themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about being a leader is being a parent, but like you, you yeah. own. You own a business if it's you're going to so like manage similar. people like you're a parent. Like it's you have so to listen. Yeah. And and um, not even I don't have any kids of my own per se. I haven't watched that development stage. But being around, you know, my girlfriend and, and her mm -hmm. child, um, you know, she's 15. It's like even seeing the teenager stage, it's mm -hmm. like you have to again there's such a spiritual process to these like yeah these practices like i'd say parenthood is a practice yeah i think business is a practice yep. and what is a practice right it means that you're allowed to make mistakes it yes. doesn't mean that it's a test it's a practice that that right. changes all the time there's a spiritual nature to it because you have to constantly put your you could even say ego but your your own needs wants and desires yep not just not, not down per se, but you have to figure out how does it work for everybody. Harmony. And it makes you more humble. Yeah. Yeah. Harmony. Exactly. Yeah. How, how can you make your needs and desires harmonious with the needs and desires of your team or yes. your children or your partner? Yes. And um, I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, I think for anyone that's actually getting into business or wanting to become a parent, like, like there's a reason for that process that I think you're feeling that way. And I think that, uh, be open to just the deeper meanings of that. I think what mm -hmm. helps get me through it is like knowing there is something always underneath the surface of what you think you want. You think you want a business because you want freedom. Nah, I think it's because you're trying to learn more about yourself and you don't even know it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to be a mom because you want to post pictures of your child on the internet. Like, no, nah, I think it's deeper than that. I bet it's because you need to know like more about your faults that you don't even know yet. It's right. like, we, I think sometimes, and you can attest to this too, actually, mm -hmm. like playing, you know, RPG games, right? Yep. You're looking at a third party view. You, like, let's look at that. All the people who like to play yep. like RPG games and they're playing third party uh, views. Mm -hmm. They're running their characters around. They can see their inventory. They're, they're hitting the map to make them go forward. That character is like you now. And mm -hmm. the person who's like in charge of the character is like your higher self. So the you yes. that's on this, like playing the game is the higher self of like reality. Yep. And so it's like, it's like you, you there, there's something at play here that's making you go to these places and start these quests mm -hmm. that the character has no real awareness of, but you're, but you're playing through it. And I, and I really feel that there's something playing through us too. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you feel called to become yeah. a business owner or to start that project don't ignore it mm -hmm. because it it it's 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 for you and yes it's going to be painful it's going to mm -hmm. be very difficult most days then it's not it's going to be hard yep. but it's kind of like a secondhand fun where you do the hard work you get through it and you're like oh shit i've come so far mm -hmm. and that's that's where the feel yeah. goods come from it doesn't come from you know being burned in the fire it comes from realizing i'm now i'm gold where i once was lit Yes. And I also think this is why I think some of the mindset is great for parent business owners, like to use this as a superpower, actually, um, because if you're already a parent, you're so much further along. And I'm sorry, no offense, 
but you're further along agree. than a lot of people that aren't parents because you understand what it takes to nurture something and someone and how to keep them alive and but also thrive and building a business is almost exactly the same and it's a lot of very similar things of communication and um helping them test their boundaries and helping them solve problems, giving them the tools that they need to be able to do those things. And like, also just the, the ability, so this is the one difference that I'm having a hard time with. And <clears throat> I'm trying to retrain my brain to think of it differently is as a parent, I can't just walk away. Right. As a business owner, potentially I can, but that's also a really limiting belief. What if I tell myself I can't walk away from it? What if I tell myself that no matter what, I'm going to stick to this and it doesn't matter if it happens tomorrow or it happens 20 years from now. Just like parenting, maybe today I wasn't a good parent, but tomorrow I'm going to do better. I need to tell that to myself as a business owner. Maybe today I wasn't a good, good business owner. Maybe I wasn't the best business owner I could be, but tomorrow I'm just going to try and do better. And having that mindset instead of saying, mm -hmm. I need to be amazing, like the best, like I need to be making money. I need to have all these clients. I need to be doing it perfectly. Like I need to be giving them the best experience they could ever have. No, I just need to be doing better to tomorrow than I did today and to mm -hmm. better today than I did yesterday. And I think mm -hmm. that's just such a healthier, like really my biggest focus is like, how can we create healthier habits for being entrepreneurs, right? How can we create better mindsets around being an entrepreneur so that less of us have, like less of us fail, less of us give up mm -hmm. because we can't make it through this this pain stage right um and i think you know the, go ahead go no ahead, please actually, do sorry. I'm, no i was just so the, the thing that the thing that i feel i was like answering it as you said it like what are some actually healthier habits and the first thing that came to me is like letting yourself feel the pain like mm -hmm. don't deny it like mm -hmm. i think that um yeah, some of my goals for that too is like making a space so people actually feel like they can feel the pain and like yeah. there's a uh, there's an artist I really love. I swear, like I only listen to him these days because just his words, just uh, they just help. And his name's Russ. I was telling you about him actually, mm -hmm. but I saw an interview about him, and um, he's like an independent artist. So like, like he doesn't have a record label. He's yeah. not owned by anyone. He puts out all his music, and he's probably one of the like richest uh, artists out there because he owns everything he's right. he he mixes masters produces writes beats all of it is himself he's, he does everything and he doesn't have to pay anyone out except mm -hmm. the people that he wants to and so one of the his things said though talking about success he's like they were telling him that like there's no money in the industry you have to do it by these rules and if you're you got to focus on if your your track is on a number a billboard or yeah you know how the how do the numbers look and he's like you got to say really fuck all that and you have to create your own rules. And this yeah. is what it means. Like so he, true. he says in one of his songs, he says in one of his songs, uh, um, I, I, I beat the game without even playing. And yeah. like the thing with that is like, you don't play by the rules mm -hmm. of what society says a business is. What is his focus when he, when he makes a song, his number one thing is creative freedom. If he puts a song out, it's already a success exactly. because he labels it with creative freedom. He has the freedom to put out whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So it's a success when it comes out. And I just finally saw that interview and I was like, boom, I need to look at success, not like money. Yes. I, I've been starting to yes. understand maybe success is just opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. maybe success is for me is like taking opportunity did I take that opportunity not not the outcome not mm -hmm. what did that opportunity do for me exactly did I take it? exactly That's success you know it's like do like you offering yes. to do this podcast like I took the opportunity this mm -hmm. podcast is already a success because we're putting put uh, putting ourselves out there it's yes. like I gotta get away from looking at success as like what did this pod did this podcast give me more exposure it's did not it the outcome more business it's not the outcomes. Mm -mm. And that's, and that's what he says too. He's like, mm -hmm. because if you don't do that, that's where you get depressed. That's yep. where the shit starts really yep. fucking you up because, and you don't become creative. So I think a practical way, yes. like habits is like as hard as it is, 
mm-hmm. figure out an actual like a new game frame yeah. like create your own game and play by your own rules yes. and like you'll win you'll win yep and I you think gotta that's, really ask yourself you, you know yeah. you do that's what keeps people from the game so that's what keeps the people who weren't in that space prior from getting into the big leagues. Right. And I think that, so I was talking with this guy, um, in one of my, uh, in the future pro group, uh, the other day, and he, um, was talking about how he'd struggled for a long time with, um, like he wouldn't even let himself have a healthy relationship with his partner. He wouldn't, um, let himself feel like he could enjoy life, like take vacations and do those kinds of things until he had achieved his version of success. And I was like, holy shit, like why? That was my biggest thing. Like why, why are people feeling this way? And a lot of the times I think this is what happens is we project on ourselves what we originally viewed as employees, as what is successful? What does society say is successful? And we try to shoot for those goals and it doesn't feel good because we didn't want those things. Like on it, what is our spiritual level saying is success and setting those up as, as like things to strive for. Maybe that's reaching out to three, three people a week, getting in front of at least five people to give them some kind of knowledge of awareness, like creating awareness, whatever that may be. And just by doing something, we are achieving those levels of success. Does it mean we're millionaires today? No. But is that our level of success? No, it's not. Like, what is your level of success? For me, it's having weekends and nights with my family. Mm -hmm. Like having the ability to work less. And that that yeah. right there is like so so what you're saying too so there's like two parts to it i see because mm-hmm. this is where the retraining happens it's like okay you're saying yeah. that's a success so that means on the weekends you gotta be like you gotta feel like you're fucking partying then you gotta feel fucking good right. and like that to me is the hardest right. thing it's like okay it is i can be all heady <laughs> and say yeah success is opportunity but like do i walk away from every opportunity feeling like fuck yeah i'm successful no and that's the retraining part and i think that's uh, and you that's what I mean. You have yeah. to fight for that. And I think that's yep. the part I want to like really say to be on record right now in this live podcast to be recorded yep. like for myself is like, yep, this is a process. Like, like I'm living the pro I am not claiming that I like that I'm doing everything that I'm talking about, but I am like what you said, I'm making my process available so that other people so I can pull this back in 10 years and be like, I I told you I was there, I was not feeling what I was saying. Yep. But I was trying and I was working. I was I was swimming. Yeah. I am figuring out how to not drown. Like that's right. all this process is. And I think right. let's be honest with that. You don't go from feeling stressed out to fucking executive in a fucking matter of, of days. It is literally no. like you learn how to swim over time. You 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 add new levels and layers to mm-hmm. what 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 it is that you're forming and building. It does yep. not go from boom to boom. And like I think a lot of people are afraid to put themselves out there because they have to feel like an expert. And like that, I'm trying to eliminate that out of my yes. mind. Like I'm, I'm putting yes. myself out here as a broken, unfinished project and not broken. It's just an unfinished project. Yeah. Like yeah. in, in that, that like be okay, be okay with the transition. Because I think it's, yep. I think it's in this place too, actually, like where we're both just being vulnerable and like sh- like just showing our strength that like we're okay with who we are, even though we're not where we want to be yep. is what's going to allow the process to actually happen. Yeah. And this is the thing I want to break like a hundred percent. Like we need to talk about these things more often because even now with like people getting more into entrepreneurship and like just being on LinkedIn and you see like, or even Instagram and seeing everyone's success and you don't get to see the behind the scenes stuff. So in your mind, you feel unsuccessful because you're like, I, I don't look anything like this person. So I must not be successful, but that's only because we like those people didn't share this part. Right. So I think Mm -hmm. that's why it's so important for more of us in this zone to be 
sharing our stories and putting it out there so that people can understand that it's a part of the process. You are like, like it's another compass for them, right? To say you're on the right path. Like, and just knowing that is a piece of comfort that we need. That's where the stability comes from. It's not necessarily the old version of stability. It's building in these like blocks of new stability Mm -hmm. of just saying like, hey, I'm like three steps ahead of you. It's going to be all right. You're going to be okay. And that's really like, that's the person I want to be is like that beacon, right? And I think that's what we're called to is just to be this, this beacon for people. But that means we have to be very, like, very open and very honest with with our own journeys and we have to overshare. And sometimes that can be hard for people like us because of where we came from and and that we were told not to be those people. Right. And so um, this is kind of a a fun experiment for both of us, I think. Yeah. Like people are watching it happen right now. Like what you're watching right right now (laughs) is what we're talking about. You know, it's like, um, you know, and I see it just the same way as like being a parent too, because Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, you know, our generation looks at our parents, like we have to parent them and then we have to parent our kids. And it's like our generation, maybe this happens in everyone, but I can only speak from my experience, but it's like, I feel like I sense it a lot more that like, we're willing to feel the pain so that we can pass something new on. And I think that's what this is right now is like, (laughs) we're just willing to feel the pain for other people so that we can say, Hey, like, cause I know there are people that'll watch this that like, they have these dreams of something. They they have a a, a gift that they're curious about, but they mm-hmm. just don't feel like confident to like do. I don't have the right equipment. I don't have the right mm-hmm. setup, or I don't have like yep. I don't have the right connections. And it's just like like literally, this is so cheesy. Be like, where there's a will, there's a way. When you yep. just like commit to like becoming better, mm-hmm. uh, you just it just like it, it happens. I don't know where. I don't know when. I don't mm-hmm. even know how. And most days I feel like giving up. If I'm being truly yeah. oh, honest, for sure. most days Almost every I day. <laughs> want to give up. But like, it's like going for a long run. It's like, I'm right there. If you can just tell yourself you're yeah. right there. It's like, it's and you can feel it so close. That's yeah. like, that's what, that's what being able to just keep doing like the one step at a time does for you. It like at this point, it, I can't go back. Like I can't because I can see, I feel feel it like in my jellies that I'm so close Mm -hmm. and I almost like I just can't give up on myself yet like I can't anymore it's not even a possibility and it's like I've done that before I've given up on myself before I started a business and I've shut it down because I didn't take the full leap I I held on to the old pieces of myself I wasn't doing the work that was necessary to get to the next stage and I've done that now (laughs) I, my, my brother told me, uh, um, so he, my brother's uh, get really getting into streaming. He's been doing that for yeah. a couple of years. Uh, and he was watching a streamer um, and some guy was shitting on him because he's like, like maybe was commenting about something that he like failed at. And the streamer was like, got super cocky and said like this, 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 this line that like I'm really holding to myself now is like, bro, I've failed more times than you've tried. And I think the, <laughs> if you can, if you can get That's to that so place, good. Where you're not, yeah, if you're not afraid of that, like knowing like, yeah, I'm going to fail. But like, think about how many people that don't even give themselves the opportunity mm-hmm. to That's fail. Again, true success failure to me. being opportunity. True failure is yes. just never even trying at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if you've tried yeah. something and it didn't work out, you won. See, and that's what I'm learning. I had to learn that the hard way with the trail. I yeah. really thought that going 700 miles was an absolute, like, I didn't do the thing. It's like, wait a minute. You know how many people quit after I can't miles? do that. <laughs> like, yeah, think that's about like, that. so it's like, and it's not even about numbers at some point. At some point, you yeah. just realize, like, okay, I am yeah. successful yeah. because I on, said on I was going to do something. Not even comparing yourself yeah. to other people. Did yeah. you do better than you could have done a year or two ago? Yeah, because a year or two ago, I didn't do it. Like I didn't have the, I didn't set exactly. it up. You're right. Like I, I actually made it happen for myself. Yeah. And it's like, I actually put myself yeah. in the position to have an opportunity to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. That's success. And I think yeah. we just need to teach yeah. people that we need to tell people like just showing up 
in doing mm-hmm. something is success yeah. because yeah. odds are good. It didn't feel comfortable to do that thing, but the more often that you continue to keep doing it and that's what people are like, Oh, you got like, you, you just, you come across so good on, you know, you, you do these <laughs> interviews and you've got a podcast and like, Oh my God, you can't be an introvert. Do you know how hard it was for me to get here? And the only way that I did was because I kept fucking showing up for myself. Yeah. Do you know what we just said before we hit record? We're like, we just got to <laughs> stay right here. We got to feel comfortable because we know when we hit that button that like we're going to get, yeah. you know, there's an opportunity to get so sporadic. So like, like it no. doesn't stop. Like it doesn't stop trying it to doesn't. Like, like the will to show up for yourself is like, that's that's the that's the muscle that you're you're flexing yeah. all the time and like you don't get that by avoiding the work like you just have to like like I started two podcasts they both like I got two episodes in and I was like I don't even want to do like they failed because I didn't like you say take the leap it's like yep. well again I failed but like if you collect the lesson it doesn't failure doesn't have to be a you bad learned. thing and this is the other it's thing too gift. here's here's a big thing so when I learned so when I quit the trail mm-hmm. when I ended the trail mm-hmm. I had all, you know, I had a lot of people well-intended, you know, saying like, oh, you're not a failure. Like you didn't fail. And like, I know what they meant by that, yeah. but there was part of me that was just like, let me fail, please. Yeah. Because the reason why I'm afraid to fail is because the entire culture thinks failure yes, is bad. And I was like, I me putting that, that post on the internet mm-hmm. to show, to say to people like, I'm failing, do you, like, don't think for a second that it didn't cross my mind that like, people are going to think that it's a negative thing. It's like, I put it out there to make a point that failure isn't bad. You don't have yes. to change my mind. You don't have to convince me nope. that I'm I'm not failing. I know I'm not failing, but I'm telling you mm-hmm. I failed so that failure can finally be an okay thing because yes. me, because I hate failing. I was so afraid of it. Yep. I, I mean, that's the reason why I had so many injuries on the trail. I was walking so fast. I was doing such big miles. I would yeah. get injuries because I'm walking fast because I didn't have enough money. If yep. I didn't, I was like, I have to do big miles. I have to finish this trail in four months because if I don't, I won't complete it and I'll fail. I was running from failure from day one and I would convince myself I wasn't. Yeah. But then once I finally admitted that I was done, I realized failure, what I thought failure was, was not that bad. And I want to help change the way that I, yes. I want to help change the way we view failure because like failure needs yep. to be accepted. It actually needs to feel like it's okay to admit that you failed. Yes. But it's not okay to feel guilty and shameful about it. It's not no. okay to feel that way. But you but you did fail. I think it's okay to say, I set my bar this way and I went just underneath it. That mm-hmm. is a failure. You did fail, but it is not inherently a negative thing. No, it's not bad. It's actually something that it's needs to be bad. celebrated. And yeah, if, if we are able to achieve anything, I think that's one of our spiritual callings, right? Is to teach people that failure is a good thing. That is okay. Yeah, it's, it's something that you learn from. It's something that makes you a better person. It's something that gets you closer to your goals. Even if you didn't hit it, it's still better than not doing anything at all. That's true failure. That's <clears throat> the, um, and as a parent, like, if I can teach my kid one freaking thing in his life, if I do nothing else, if I'm a bad mom at everything else, if I can just teach him that it's okay to fail, I think he'll have some like the happiest life he could ever have, right? He'll try more times. He'll yeah. try more times. Because he knows that there's because yes. there's a win-win. If I fail, it's a win yeah. because I'll learn something. Mentally, if I win, it's a he'll win be ready for everything, good. right? Mentally, he can tackle anything. Physically, he can tackle anything because nothing, he'll be unstoppable. That's literally what that mindset teaches you. And this is what, this is the difference between people who are down here and people who are up here. It's literally Mm -hmm. that gap of, I can accept failure and not be, and I just keep moving forward. It makes you invincible. Like this is the power that you can have. And that if you can deal with the pain, right? This is like, oh, this is what gives me really excited, right? Yeah, this is good. This is the <laughs> this is the real, this is the juice. And like everything yeah. that we talked about, it's like use physical challenges, use the ice, mm-hmm. use whatever things you can to help associate a positive mm-hmm. thing with pain. Because you know, that's yes. another thing I actually didn't even mention. When I got out, when you get out of an ice bath mm-hmm. and you feel the warmth flowing through your body again, it's like a double dose of like, oh, it feels so good. So it's like when you associate pain in a positive way mm-hmm. in like physical aptitude tests, yeah. 
you, 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 when you're done with running or you're done with the workout, or you're done with the, the ice bath, like you get an overload of feel good. So you'll start associating pain as like, I know what's at the end of yeah. this. And then you can start applying that to your mental, emotional and spiritual objectives, you know? Um, oh, the so other good. thing I wanted to say too, like, you know, I was telling this to my girlfriend last night that I was like, what the fuck am I doing this stress management shit for? Like, why am I doing, I'm like, and she laughs because she knew, and she knew what the point I was trying to make. She was just mm-hmm. like, why? Because you're so stressed out all the time. I'm like, yeah, like, how can I teach people to be like managing I have that stress? feeling and she's all like, the time. And she's like, Troy, you're, you're, you're doing it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's like, you're, you're, you made yeah. this stress management thing yeah. to help yourself so yeah. that in the process you can help other people. And like, I think I forget and other people might as well. That's why I'm bringing it up that mm-hmm. like your greatest gift is like the thing that you struggle with the most. It's not the things you're already good at. Like, yeah. like it's the things that you're going through. And so I created this business thinking like, Oh, I'm, I'm good with stress management. Like, no, I'm not good with stress management. I'm going through the process of it because I need it. And like, yes. if I don't create something that I need, how can I believe in it? How can I trust exactly. it? How can I have confidence in it? So like, even if you're not good at something, mm-hmm. but you have a tenacity and a passion for that, like I have a passion to like, want to not feel so, God, you know, so much of the yep. time. So, so, so whizzed out of my mind. Yep. Like, like the re- things people laugh at, you know, they're like, Troy, you know, you're so calm. Like, I don't ever, like, how could you ever be like, I could never see you be angry or mad. And I was like, you did not see me as a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yep. 18, 19, 20, 21 year old. Like, exactly. I've been mad my whole life. Mm-hmm. The only reason I'm good at it now is because I like, I'm focusing on it. And so the stress management thing for me is like, it's just my solution to my yep. own problems. And like, yeah. and I come from the the mindset of like, if I'm feeling it and if I'm connected to everyone and everything, I'm not that original and that's okay. I have an original yeah. solution maybe, or I have a, right. a little pizzazz that I can add to it. But like the feelings are probably not original and a lot no. more people universally feel it. There's only so many feelings, man. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. exactly. A lot of people in the world. But your your background, the way you approach it, that's what I've learned. And I I keep having to tell myself yeah. the same thing too is – that's what's unique that my take on it the way i'm bringing it the way i'm telling it the the time i'm telling it at the people that i'm going to reach that's what's unique because there might be a small amount of people that are doing the same thing i am but they don't have the same approach they they don't live in the same space they don't have the same ability that i do they might be like in different areas and like i still can reach people Right. And so I have to keep telling myself that. But yeah, I struggle with the same thing because I tell myself that all the time. I'm like, how am I going to help people have work life balance? And sorry, if I, I don't, I just, have, it. If I don't have it. Right. Like, it's, yeah. it, and, but I'm like, no, this is, this is my gift. This is what I was made to do is to help show people that if I can do it because I need it. Yes then I can show others to have that too. And that's what I bring to the world. That's the the thing that I can do. Um, that's what makes me like different. That's what makes me, that's what makes me feel good. Um, yes. And that, yeah, I think that's huge. And that's what keeps me going because if you don't have that driving need, why bother? What's going to get you through those, those moments of pain? What's going to, what is the, the like, the gold to so to speak mm-hmm. that you're mm-hmm. seeking in order yes. to to get into the fire right um yes. and if we don't like have if we don't feel it's valuable why would anybody else exactly that's like that's like business 101 like if it you is. don't believe in your own product like exactly you, you're just a con you're just a salesman you're just making money right and yeah. so that's really what keeps pushing me forward is like I have to have that conversation with myself sometimes of like, regardless of if I help any single person, I need to help myself. So just Mm -hmm. keep doing it. Like if you want a better life for yourself, you need to keep moving forward, whatever that might mean. And so Mm -hmm. I just need to do my best at the same time to 
record the process and talk with people, be honest, be, be open. And if that's the best that I can do right now, then I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, we've riffed, actually, this we've, is perfect timing. It is. We drifted so long, um, and I yeah. I also have to use the the bathroom and and eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, the bathroom. I have a client at one. Yeah. This oh is man. Perfect. Oh good. Okay. So we didn't yeah, get too, we didn't go too long. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me, and I really want to keep doing this. I think we should make this a regular thing because. Dude, this is good. This is I good. Just like, enjoy like, it. Dude, that's what I mean. Like, you think about the artists, right? They all talk about, yeah. like, like art imitates life. Like, a lot of artists who who make music, like, the good ones, they, they're good because it's therapeutic for them. And, like, yeah. I just like communicating and I getting do. some of these things off my chest and, mm -hmm. and actually have it, you know, conversations and, like, phone calls are good. But, like, this new yeah. wave of, like, what we can do with a podcast, mm -hmm. like, show other people. Um, I just love the idea of, like, the potential, like, the potential yeah. of what our words it's can like do to the people ripples because, right it's an amplifier yeah 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 you know and you never know this could be a five years down the road before someone actually like really understands what we're saying and like True. like but the but that would never be a thing if we had it's like, still not gonna be negative though right yeah 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 exactly it's already a success we put it out it's already a success you know? yeah yeah so yeah thank you for having me thank you for um you know involving me in your process and this is um and this is just really it's therapeutic for me as well so i would i would love to continue this conversation yeah, and just have more more episodes for sure we will do that so thank you so much for joining us today guys um and i'll put troy's info in the description as well but do you have any anywhere that you like them to reach out to you specifically uh specifically i do a lot through um you know instagram um you know only like real TikTok. close people get the the, the 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 phone the text message yeah tiktok um tiktok if you want to see like a lot of my newest content that's where i put a lot of like my fresh stuff mm -hmm. instagram is like a great place for dms sometimes i'll put information on there but i haven't been focusing on instagram a lot lately uh you can find me at facebook you know troy flato that's another one um and i don't do too much on linkedin either so if you want to get a hold of me, Instagram's a good one. But if you want to like see my content, mm -hmm. uh, TikTok's a good, a good yeah. one. Yeah. Highly recommend it for anyone. I, that's like the best start to my morning. So I just go through and like, awesome. watch all your stuff. I got a lot on there. Yeah, yeah I got a lot great. on there. It's it's Thank insightful you. and it, it it gives me <clears throat> like a great grounding. It's it's like a grounding yeah. rod to the morning, right? Dude, you know, I've never heard someone say that about my content, but like, it's so funny because the thing that I've been struggling with is staying grounded. And the fact that if I'm like a grounding piece with someone else, you it are. just goes exactly to what we were just talking about. Like sometimes you, you don't, you, you do things for yourself and that's how you make the world better. You don't try to change the world, you change who you are. Exactly. And literally if everyone did that, man, think how amazing it would be. Yeah. It's really yeah. just focus on yourself a little bit more, even though that seems this is, the, again, rewriting. It's not selfish. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not you're not uh, being a negative person. You're doing better. And that's better for everyone. Right. That's right. That's right. Cool. Well, awesome. thank you thank for you you joining so me today. I appreciate you coming on. Um, we'll talk with you guys Absolutely. next time. I will definitely get Troy back on and we will um, riff some more. But uh, until next time, guys, thanks so much for joining us and grow tall and spread love, my friends. Bye. Like and subscribe for more stories on finding your way on your career path journey.